within the biblical text. Verses and stories and even particular words that seem to have a life of their own. They exist kind of outside of the biblical text. Even if you were not raised in the church, if you're not identified as a Christian, if you're not someone who has read through the Bible or attended Sunday school or goes to church every week or, or studied the text in any way, even if you have no relationship at all to Christianity, you probably know some of those stories and texts and verses and words. If you think about it, an avid moviegoer anywhere in the world has probably seen the stories of Moses and the stories of Jesus either as the central theme or a peripheral theme in some blockbuster. You don't have to go to church to know those stories. If you're like me and you like to visit other countries and historical sites, you will notice that there are biblical versions or verses etched on numerous monuments and statues and above doors and on walls and palaces and other churches and other shrines all over in a myriad of languages. If you go to CVS or Rite Aid, or Walgreens to get that Valentine's card you forgot to pick up earlier, and you quickly start to look through the cards from Hallmark or American Greetings, you will have a wealth of biblical verses to choose from for any life event. There are verses and words that, although associated with Christianity, seem to have a life of their own and are known outside of the church. The reading for today from Luke is one of those verses. A lot of people know at least the opening part of the blessings. I bet when we were reading it up here, you were hearing it in your head in the way you have heard it time and time again. Let me read it for you. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of God. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what your ancestors did to the prophets. I will bet... That as I was reading that, you were hearing those words as you first heard them. They were part of the stories that you learned about. You know about the Sermon on the Mount. You didn't have to go to the movies to hear about it. You've heard people preach on these words. You've read them in your own Bibles. You know these words. They may not have been exactly what you knew. There may have been a slight twist here and there. I was reading from the New Revised Standard Version. There are other versions, and they're all nuanced, but they all say the same thing. Or maybe what you were remembering, actually, was how Matthew says it. Because, interestingly enough, the blessings and woes are not just in the Gospel of Luke. The Sermon on the Mount also appears in Matthew, and there is a nuanced difference. When I was in seminary, I remember going to a class, a New Testament class one day, and I was there with one of the most eminent professors of New Testament and Greek in the world. And the lesson for that day that he was going to talk to us about was the blessings in Matthew and Luke. And we spent the entire class discussing what the differences were between those two passages. We went through the nuances of Greek. We went through how difficult it is to translate Aramaic to Greek. We went through the socioeconomic differences of the congregation for Luke and the congregation for Matthew. We went through all of this stuff. And at the end of the lesson, from the most premier New Testament scholar in the world at the time, 
I knew no more than when I got there. Except for one thing. He said, here's the question for you. What does it mean to be blessed? The question is, what does it mean to be blessed? Not blessed. Blessed and blessed are different. Blessed is what happens when someone gives you a blessing. It is an act, right? It's the reception of a gift. But blessed, blessed is more like a characteristic. It's something that somebody sees in you, not something they distribute to you. It's something that exudes from you. So it is different than being blessed. So being a modern person that I am, as I started to think about that, I did what any modern person did. I Googled it. Now, if you're more old school, you can go check it in the dictionary, but they're about the same. Blessed. What does blessed mean? Came up with six definitions. Consecrated, sacred, holy, or sanctified. Number one. Worthy of adoration, reverence, or worship. Divinely or supremely favored or fortunate. Blissfully happy and contented. Beatified in the Roman Catholic tradition. Bringing happiness and thankfulness. Sounds like something we should want to be. I mean, who doesn't want to be favored? Who doesn't want to be worthy of adoration? Who doesn't want to be blissfully happy? Sounds like something we should want to be. But listen to the text. Blessed are you who are poor, who are hungry, who weep, who are hated and excluded and reviled and defamed on account of the Son of Man. That doesn't sound like a lot of fun to me. That kind of sounds like a really difficult life. Loss, sacrifice, isolation, loneliness, yeah, not, not exactly what I'm aspiring to. But that's what Jesus said at the Sermon on the Mount. Important enough to be recorded not by one, but by two gospel writers. Blessed are you who are poor, who are hungry, who weep, who are hated, reviled and defamed on account of the Son of Man. Okay, let's be honest. I ain't any of those things. I have a beautiful home. I make a good living at the university. Our pantry is filled. I don't go hungry any day. I have a family that loves me. I have funds that allow me to go on vacations and enjoy life in different ways. I have been called upon to be an expert in a number of different stages. I have been written about by other authors and article writers about some of the accomplishments that I have done. I am not what this says. I am not. If I just read it that way, if I just read those words. And so I ask myself, 
what is it to be blessed? And I have to remind myself of two things. To be blessed does not mean how to be a child of God. Because I'm a child of God no matter what. I am a child of God not because of anything I did, but because I was born and made in the image and likeness of God himself. I am a child of God regardless. It's not about being a Christian either, because Christianity is about a choice. What path do you want to follow? Who do you want to claim as your savior? Who is your example in life? Who are you worshiping? So being blessed isn't about being a child of God, because that's a given. You've been a child of God all along. It's not about being a Christian, because you've already made that choice. But Christ says that to be blessed is to be poor, to be hungry, to weep, to be hated, excluded, reviled, and and defamed on account of God, on account of the Son of Man. That's what it says. And if you read the text from the context of the world, here in this world that we live in, where we count everything and measure everything and weigh everything against each other, then there is no way certainly for me, to be blessed and to live the life that I live. But I'm not asked to read the text. I'm not asked to read the Bible from the context of the world. I'm asked to read the text from the context of the grace of God. You see, we all remember that first line. Blessed are those who are poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's the line most people remember. But you have to read the end. You have to read all the way through. You've got to get through the whole section there until you get to what I think is a defining phrase. So let me read a little bit more for you. Blessed are you who are poor. For yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and defame you. On account of the Son of Man. If you read the text from the grace of God, from that perspective, and you remember that phrase on account of the Son of Man, then I believe we start to understand what it means to be blessed. Blessed are you who are poor. Those of you who have given of your faith, who have shared your faith in words and examples to the point that there is nothing left for you to share, to who have reached down so far deep into your heart and your soul for compassion and forgiveness and mercy to each other and to other people around you, that there is little left but a crumb at the bottom of your soul. That, my friends, is poverty on account of the Son of Man. When you have nothing left, when you have given it all away as you've been called to do, when you are completely depleted, when you are reaching out because there is nothing left inside of you and you are aching for the word of God, you are aching to feel the compassion of God yourself, when you are reaching for that Bible to find words that will fill you up, when you are praying on your knees and reaching out, that, my friends, is hunger on account of the Son of Man. When reaching out to God feels like it is grasping for your last breath, that is hunger. And when you are frustrated, when you have tried and tried to raise up your neighbor, 
when you have given them everything that you have and there's nothing left for you to do. And when you get down on your knees and you cry out to God and you plead to God, please help that person. That, my friends, is weeping on account of the Son of Man. And when your friends change the topic of the conversation because your depth of giving is more than they can take, and when your family chooses to let you over there because it is too hard for them to understand how deep your compassion is for someone, and when you are the only person who shows up for someone else who is in dire need and you ask yourself, why am I the only one, and still you do it, that is when you are hated and defamed, and reviled, and excluded on account of the Son of Man. To be blessed, to be blessed is to go beyond mere believing. To be blessed is to take the words of our Savior, to take the words of our Redeemer, take the example of our Redeemer, and to bring it into our life in such a full and empowering way that we go home empty, Seeking God. It is so pervasive in us. It is so overwhelming to us that when someone looks at us, they go, a person is blessed. They see it in us, blossoming through us, because when we get to that point of emptiness, that is when God favors us. That is when we are fortunate. That is when we receive happiness. That is when God fills up our hunger. That is when we are blessed. And Jesus says, on that day, rejoice and leap for joy, for your reward is great. On that day, when it's only you and God, on that day when there is nothing else, but you and God. On that day when you are so overwhelmed by the presence of God in your life and people look at you differently now, on that day rejoice because you are blessed.
Thank you. 